Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In this lesson, number 72, we'll take a look at a more detailed view of event-driven architecture and take a look at a pattern called the multi-broker pattern. The multi-broker pattern basically asks the question, how can you increase the throughput and capacity of messages through your system? And let me show you a technique uh, to be able to basically significantly increase the throughput and capacity of messages. Uh, this works really well, by the way, for things like uh, logging, for example, if you're going to be using messaging for logging or trying to simulate uh, the throughput of, for example, Apache Kafka, but you're not able to use Apache Kafka. Let me show you a scenario here. Let's say we have three event producers, and these are systems that are producing events, and they're all writing to a single broker on a queue. Now, we've got event consumers that are competing consumers against that queue, so we're processing in parallel here. Um, now, one important thing I want to note here is that generally in this scenario, message order is not preserved. And that's actually kind of an important point for the pattern I'm actually going to show you. Now, most brokers um, can process around 11,000 messages a second, and that's non-persisted. Persisted is usually a threshold of around 4,000 messages a second. But 11,000 is about a peak um, for most brokers for throughput on the number of messages. The problem is each of these consumers is pushing through 4,000 messages a second. And so if you just do the math, you'll notice that we've got three event producers all processing or producing 4,000 messages a second, but that broker with that queue can only process 11,000, which means that we're going to have a deficit of 1,000 messages a second, which means that we can't keep up. So let me show you a technique using a multi-broker pattern to be able to significantly increase this capacity. So we're going to keep our same scenario here. All these event producers are still processing 4,000 messages or producing 4,000 messages a second. But rather than one broker and one queue, what we have are multiple brokers. And so, for example, I'm going to spin up four instances of the broker with four different queues. Now, watch what happens here. The first event producer, what it's going to do is a simple round robin algorithm to when it sends a message, it's going to start firing these off to different queues. And so the first one will go to broker A, broker B, broker C, broker D, for example. And then the yellow event producer will do the same thing. And then the gray event producer will do the same thing. And the point is this, every time it produces a message, like I said, just it's connecting to four different brokers, um, but effectively what it's doing is a simple round robin to distribute that load. And now we have competing consumers against each of those queues. Again, the reason why I wanted to make the point about message order is that clearly message order will not be preserved here either, but it's not in the original scenario either. But notice each broker can process 11,000 messages a second, which means effectively what we have here in this grouping is a capacity of 44,000 messages a second that we can process. Now, since we're only passing through 12,000 messages a second, we have extra capacity here of 32,000 messages a second. Now, clearly that's overkill. In this particular scenario, two different brokers would have probably been fine based on the load we have. But that's where the math would come in about how many messages we're producing and how many messages can actually be processed by an actual broker. And so this is a way of kind of expanding a very simple pattern um, but one to basically distribute the load across multiple brokers um, to be able to increase capacity and also throughput. So for more information, um, there are a lot of lessons that I have on event-driven architecture. And if you go to Software Architecture Monday, um, which is developer2architect.com slash lessons, you can actually see some of those other ones. I also offer some private training classes in architecture, microservices, and also analyzing architecture. And you can see those on my training link. And also um, visit the upcoming events page to find out where I'm uh, training either publicly, uh, uh, speaking at conferences, or also doing um, public online training as well.
So this has been a Software Architecture Monday, Lesson 72, The Multi-Broker Pattern. Again, my name is Mark Richards, and thank you so much for listening.